Hey everybody and welcome to another HBCU conversation here on HBCU Game Day. We got a really cool guest right now. You might know him as the head coach of North Carolina Central University men's basketball program. I know him as this scrawny little kid who showed up in Raleigh from Boston one day. And I mean, he weighed like a buck oh five, but nobody could keep up with him on the basketball court. A friend for a very long time, Lavelle Moten. Lavelle, what's happening, my man? T Kyle, appreciate you having me, my man. Hey, always good to talk to you, man. Always, People always. People are out there expecting an X's and O's conversation. Go ahead and. and Skip to something else. Head on over to Twitter or something because uh, no doubt, no it's doubt about not it. It's going to be that type of conversation. We we want to get to the real <laughs> stuff. Uh, this coronavirus has everybody in the house, can't go anywhere. So I want to know. America wants to know how many packs of butter cookies have you knocked out this week? Man, shoot, I, I I've lost count. <laughs> I'm scared to step on the scale, man. Like my my biggest problem right now is 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 you know not being quarantined, but just being quarantined and 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 you know having the discipline not to eat my kids snacks man because they home from school and my wife went to costco's or bj's or wherever and just stacked up man and every time i open up the pantry it's all different flavors of cereal uh the rice krispie treats butter cookies cheese balls doritos man look uh, i'm tempted man and and i've been failing miserably right now but <laughs> as every man in america say i'm gonna start i'm gonna start my diet on monday <laughs> <laughs> i know i know it's the honey buns the little debbie honey Honey buns. Oh I'm my always goodness, like, bro! Oh you know, we, my we goodness. just had a baby recently, and so I'm just in the mood of, of getting snacks for my wife and the kids, so everybody will be happy. I'm just breaking all the sugar laws, and I just haven't got out of oh, that routine, my goodness. man. So it's uh, look, man. That's that's the biggest addiction in the world, sugar. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Sh- sugar worse than this corona. <laughs> yeah, sugar, sugar worse than this corona out here. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's crazy. What what have you learned about your kids now that everybody's been closer that maybe you thought they knew or just something that's really surprised you about the, the technological gap? I'll give you an example. My, my kids were playing around here in the studio the other day and they were jump jumping rope and they didn't want to go outside. And uh, I said, well, put on some music while y'all are playing. And, and you can't see it. It's out of the shot. But there's a record player over there and they like Michael Jackson. You know, I turned them on. Right, to it. right. And when the music stopped, they were like, well, Daddy, what do we do? I was like, turn the record over and put the needle on. Oh, my goodness. I they don't well know nothing told about them, that. Go to the moon and get a new record. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. You, you know what? Like, the more I tell you what I've learned, I've learned that my, my, my kids are so smart that they're actually clueless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because they just the information and generational technology age, but they don't know how to do the little things. And, you know, I asked my seven year old son, I said, man, take, you know, take this trash downstairs and tie the, tie the bag. He didn't know how to tie, tie the bag. <laughs> right. And I'm like, he knew how to take it down. I was like, you know, at seven, like, bro, you don't have any responsibilities the way we had it. And, and, and we're the problems as parents. Like we, we don't put them through the gauntlet that our parents put us through. You know, like when, when we were seven years old, we were getting notes and left on the table from our parents saying, listen, when I get home, this house better be clean. <laughs> so we knew how to pass all everything. We knew how to put the bleach and Ajax in the tub and clean the showers and all of those things. These kids know nothing about that, man. So, you know, d- doing this Corona, um, break right here they're gonna start learning something in my house i'll tell you that but hey, you know the, you know the boomers are, we'll, we'll still give them credit as the greatest generation but as we move into that spot man there's something to be said about latchkey kids who had to Oof. come home and fend for themselves every day Ooh, Ooh. man I, I tell and you you know what it's crazy that you mentioned that because I, I get asked to speak to like middle school coaches, high school coaches. And the first question, the number one question and the most asked question that I get from them is, how do you teach leadership? And I say, look, y'all struggling with it. I'm struggling with it on my on, on my end, too, because last key kids, we learned the value of leadership because we had to lead ourselves and we had to make decisions, whether it be right or wrong, to be 
in a, a in an asset or a liability for myself because our parents weren't there to make decisions such as what am I going to eat when I get home from school? Now, my mama told me I better not cut this stove on, but <laughs> should I do it anyway? <laughs> cut it off. You know, all of those are leadership <laughs> things that carry over into our adulthood life, you know, because we didn't have anyone over us. Um, making those solid decisions for us, man. So, you know, shout out to all the Latchkey kids. And, and I know you're doing something outstanding in life right now because you had to make decisions every day from yeah. 10 to 16 <laughs> on, on, <laughs> on what to eat and how to live. You had to survive. It was you had to survive. Everybody <laughs> on their own every day. Every day was an adventure. <laughs> no a doubt. Latchkey kid. Uh, I, I guess we should talk a little basketball. People might get mad if I don't ask you anything. How, how did you feel? Um, no one had any control over it, but just, you know, you're in the midst of, you know, you win the MEAC, the, you're about to roll into the semifinals, and, and on that Thursday, across America, tournaments were just dropping one by one. Yeah, you know, as a competitor, um, you know, obviously I was extremely disappointed, um, you know, for, for a plethora of reasons. I thought we were playing our best basketball, and, you know, um, we, we've had that feeling before and I knew what it looked and sounded like, you know, amongst our team. And I thought we were trying to click on all cylinders. We had just uh, played that outstanding game against Delaware State and we had advanced to the semifinals and then the tournaments did begin to drop one by one. And, you know, so from a selfish standpoint, you, you're, you're disappointed because you want to compete. But, you know, I'm all for the health care and the safety of every individual. And I just thought, like, this thing was getting out of hand a little bit. Like, and and I thought we were uneducated to it. We as a whole in the society, we were uneducated to it because, you know, you hear about the Ebola and you, you know, the swine flu and this, that. Every year is something. But we didn't never understand, you know, completely to the magnitude of this. And it started sweeping the nation. And it, it did it in like 24 hours. So once the tournament was canceled, I was all for it, you know, because I'm just about, you know, the health and safety and the well-being of these kids and just making sure they got back. And, you know, once we got back, I, the uncertainty of what what do we do now? Right. Like, because you got to understand it affects so much that's going on. All right? not only from a competitive standpoint, but just from academic. OK, academically, like so now kids have to register in online classes that wasn't originally an online class. It was a face to face. So now they got to go. And then for our seniors, like a kid, Jabri Blunt, who's played a year, who has NBA hopes and dreams and desires like those camps are canceled and then for commencement that's going to be canceled and now you got to think about the kids that's in high school that's trying to qualify to go to college right if their academic year is suspended then do they take the sat or do they qualify everyone and now the spring sports do they have all the seniors come back like so it's so much that was going on and it's been hitting you know the 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 world by storm and those decisions are still you know out there remaining to be made and so you know we're just trying to piece it all together man i heard someone say this and i don't know if it's true but you can put a you can put a, a an end or or a point to it here were you already on the bus when they said the tournament was canceled we were actually at the arena supporting the girls our, our, our women's team because our women was playing A and T, right, right? Um, and you know it was we went to the arena and it was just weird, right? It was just weird. Um, you know I'm already uh, paranoid about my health anyway, so I don't want to be around too many people when they saying a virus or something is floating around. So I just remember being in the arena. I said this don't even feel like a basketball game. Our girls were score, and it was difficult to cheat. Like it was just difficult to be involved in the game. The game. Yeah, it was really awkward, and and you, at the time you're hearing rumors circulating. Okay, well the ACC just canceled theirs. Well, Big East just canceled theirs at halftime, and now it's like okay, the me the SWAC just canceled theirs, and I was like okay, when we heard the SWAC, I was like okay, it's not going to be too long before the MEAC canceled theirs. We're definitely not going to be the only tournament playing in the midst of this coronavirus. So after that, it was just a matter of when, um, and we were leaving the the arena. And I got a text from my chancellor saying, you know, it's being canceled. Um, bring the guys to the hotel and, you know, we'll have a, a discussion and a celebration um, to honor him. And that's how we received the news. 